Thank you, Zeynep, uh, and uh, thank you for all of you coming here and uh, listening to us. Uh, what I would like to do is uh, to uh, share with you my uh, uh, sort of opinion and remarks on, on the significance of uh, uh, of, uh, of the of taking seriously human rights in the possible uh, post-conflict uh, uh, situation in, in, uh, in the MENA, MENA region. And in the very uh, small time, I like to uh, do my comments on the basis of uh, kind of a telegraphic form. Uh, the, the first actually is, uh, uh, you know, we, we have all the reasons to be very pessimistic about the current state of affairs in terms of human rights, and as a matter of fact, in the near near future. And uh, when I when I uh, before I came here, I I, I did the, when I was survey the recent uh, reports on on the current state of human rights in the MENA region and and, and elsewhere. Uh, you know, uh, one could actually talk about four significant uh, negative factors uh, that 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 should make us uh, pessimistic. The first actually is, uh, of course. Uh, you know, human rights violations are accelerating and multiplying, being multiplied because of the changing form of uh, war uh, in, in, in the Nimena region. Yeah, we are not talking about total wars right now. We are talking about a bunch of uh, wars that are creating human rights violations and making humans at very, very danger. We are talking about asymmetric wars. We are talking about proxy wars. We are, we are talking about internal wars, civil wars, so on and so forth. And all of them actually are happening Within states, and 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 the main target actually is, is becoming the uh, innocent innocent civilians. The second actually is this the, the increasing uh, you know challenge uh, security challenge which we got from the uh, uh, sort of a simultaneous development of failed state situation in the MENA region and the increasing violence. And, and as a matter of fact, when it comes to human security issues, we are referring not only wars but also violence. Violence against uh, children, violence against women, violence against 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 people, and and, and the failed states, uh, for instance, uh, right now Syria and Iraq, but of course Libya, Yemen, so well, so and so forth, mushrooming in this in this region are not able to actually deal with this 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 actually challenge challenges. So so this and the second one actually comes to, that that come from from many is, is is the uh, you know coupling effect of of, of failed state situation and and the the, the you know the, the, the importance of violence as a form of, uh, you know, uh, uh, security risk. The, 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 the third one that comes from the advanced countries is the increasing, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, acceptance of what is called fear society, and and, and and fear society coming from terror, internal wars, and so and so, on and so forth. And now in, in Europe, in the United, United United States, in the West generally, the increasing Islamophobia, xenophobia, and and and. And 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 and, it, and the uh, you know this general tendency to, to think of the others as, as potentially a security the security threat, and then coupled with actually the increasing uh, power and influence of uh, what is called right now populist uh, regimes uh, in 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 these in this in this in these in this countries, which actually become more uh, inward, more more reactive against globalization, so and so forth. So so in a sense, human rights. Uh, you know, are, are kind of actually surrounded by uh, by by multiple uh, multiple multiple uh, multiple challenges. So 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 we have to actually uh, talking about an issue which is very actually uh, significant, but at the same time, unfortunately, unfortunately, in a, in a kind of a, a, a sort of a mass security, uh, you know, sort of void. Uh, the second one is uh, why it is very important because, uh, especially in the MENA, is, is we, we realize in this uh, shark forums and the other other forums that one of the reason why the the, 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 the kind of hopes for for future in the Arab Spring, Tunisia, Egypt, then of course problems with Libya, then disasters in, in Egypt and then and, and, and Syria. You know uh, this this whole uh, development uh, the, the, and the retreat 
you know, too, too much authority and instability and everything, has gave us a big lesson that, that, that you know, uh, internal uh, bottom-up developments uh, need uh, a security architecture. And as a matter of fact, the Arab Spring failed, mainly because of the lack of security architecture that was supposed to back this, this actually societal development for, for a better regime, a better government, a better, 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 better every, every day, everyday life. So, so there is definitely a, actually a connection between, between the betterment in human rights and, and, and also the, the need for, for, for security, security regime. The third actually is uh, also a lesson that we actually came from, from, from the Arab up Springs and, and, and the Mena region is, is this. In the, uh, in the way in which uh, we think about human rights, which is very liberal, very, very you know, uh, Western oriented, very Eurocentric, uh, uh, we actually tend to uh, uh, place an uh, uh, important role on rights and freedoms, uh, you know, uh, to, 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 to talk about, about them. And this creates, you know, sort of problems and, and, and discussions about, about, about the way in which we should think, you know, human rights. But with Arab Spring and, and with the people, coming from, from MENA, we actually added a very, very significant, as far as I am concerned, very significant element to, 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 to the, the thinking of human rights, which is dignity. As much as the rights and freedoms, human dignity constitute a, a fundamental dimension of human rights. As a matter of fact, if we want human rights as universal, uh, you know, a premise or universal value, it should be based on rights and dignity. And, and, and we learned that from, from the people of, of, of this region from from the from the from the Mena, Mena region. So, so in this sense, in the post-conflict uh, reconstruction process, if we are going to think about the situation in terms of human rights, we should actually approach the issue on the basis of you know creating mechanisms that would ensure rights, liberties, and as my friend would correctly point out, rule of law with, with, with dignity. By by actually ignoring the dignity of these these these, these people, you know the the, the, the post-conflict uh, the Developments cannot be cannot be sustainable, uh, and the fourth one actually is when we actually uh, think about how are we going to actually do this transformation. I think. Uh, uh, Unfortunately, uh, you know, we should actually start uh, with, with, with the state because when I look at the situation in the, in the Arab Spring and in the MENA, one of the main reasons why we have actually this big human rights violations in the form of violence, in the form of war, in the form of, you know, refugees and innocent people who are forced, displaced from, from their, their home. We have actually 3.6 million in, 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 in Turkey, more than 6 million in Turkey, Jordan, Jordan, and and and, uh, and and Lebanon, and with this whole you know new UN reports in in Somalia and everywhere, we have actually talking about more than 10 million you know people uh, people. So so it's a very outrageous, very 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 shocking uh, you know unacceptable situation in front in front of us. But but, but nevertheless, we need to, to establish order and stability, and we need to go for for you know rebuilding uh, the state, in, especially in in Syria and and and, and Iraq. I think it should start with the sort of the. There was a very lovely, uh, you know, talk in the previous previous panel by 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 uh, by, by this uh, fellow from the Cambridge University about connecting the Westphalian regime with with the actual possibility of stability in in, in, the, in the region. So so in this sense, I think you know the failed state situation should be should be remedied, and 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 and, and we have to actually if we are asking these states to be responsible to their people, you know, we, we should actually have a state there, not failed state, not rough state, but, but states. But of course, uh, I totally agree with my friend that, 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 that you know, uh, we should not be actually uh, purely security oriented in the way in which we talk about the uh, new state structure. We have to ask the question of what kind of state, what kind of order we want so that actually we could provide rights and dignity to, to people that they, they actually uh, deserve. And in that, in that uh, 
I'm finishing. In the, in that in that sense, uh, I think uh, you know, uh, in the, in the way in which we think about post-conflict reconstruction process or possibility of, of normality, even as a starting point, especially in Syria and in Iraq, we should actually talk about rule of law. We should talk about dignity. We should talk about rights and freedoms of 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 of, of, of the people. But 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 in doing so, we have to resist. You know, all of these factors that I started with, we have to resist against the different forms of war in this region. We have to resist against any kind of violence in the region coming from state, non-state actors, and 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 and, and, and global, uh, you know, global, uh, global, global actors. But at the same time, we should resist, you know, Islamophobia. We should res resist populism, you know, in in Europe and, and in, in the United States. I think the Arab people, the, the Arab Spring has shown us that change is possible in this in this geography. People have all the capacity and ability to, to actually initiate the change. But of course, change should be coupled with security regime. But of course, the best security regime should be based on the dignity and rights of people that actually will carry out the uh, you know transformation in this region. Thank you. <laughs>